I decided right off the bat when I knew I was going to be going away for a long time that I had to do something with myself while I was here. I wanted to do something to change. I wanted to come out better than I came in. The woodshop program, I knew about it from previous stays here. You're lucky to get in here. There's not as many positions as there are people that want to be in them. Uh, working here, I've been in here I think 14 months now and it's the longest I've ever had a job ever in my life. That's got me excited, you know, for when I get out. You know, I'm getting used to getting up and going to work every day. And I think that's going to make a big difference for me when I hit the streets. I actually absolutely still appreciate the program. I think it's vitally important. It's why I'm here today. It's absolutely important. It's such good therapy. Because remember, idle hands are a devil's workshop. The industry's program statewide, we have five adult correctional facilities and we have a program established in every one of them. Prisoners, in order to get into the program, have to earn their way into the program. We have them compete for jobs, so when an opening comes up, um, they're usually recommended by staff from their living areas or program areas that they're doing well following the programs. Um, then we try to select the best fits for what the particular job might be trying to get them prepared for when the opportunity does come that they're going to be back on the streets and put them in a much more skilled position uh, to stay out once they get out. It took me almost a year to get in because remember, it's a state prison. So you don't just hand sharp tools to anybody. They watch you very well. I mean, you're in a place where they're trained to watch you. So they kind of have a good idea uh, whether or not you deserve a shot. And they try to give everybody a shot. If you mind your own, you stay out of trouble, and you're doing the things that are asked of you, you're programming if you're asked to do that by your caseworkers. Uh, you know what I mean? You get along well with others. You can deal with staff very well. You can articulate a little bit. You will get a shot. Sometimes it takes a little while, but when you're doing a long time, a little while is nothing. Our store in Thomaston has been open for over 80 years. We consider ourselves to be a point of destination for a lot of travelers and visitors from out of state. Uh, we see a lot that come back year after year that might have summer homes or may be choosing to vacation along the coast of Maine. At our peak, we've seen as many as 220 bus tours stop in one, one calendar year. Um, and with that, of course, comes anywhere from 40 to 60 people that are usually excited, a chance to get in and, and see some things um, that they're not normally going to see in their, their home states. And oftentimes, the suggestions we got, they wish that their, their states offered a program similar to this that both benefits the you know, customers on the street, but it also they see the value in, uh, in meaningful work and creative work and how it could be a rehabilitative tool. Our new store in Wyndham is also going to attract a lot of the people traveling on that heavy route and as, over time we'll develop a rapport with travelers that, that there's some really unique handcrafted items available um, at very affordable prices. And, and over time your business definitely grows. Statewide we take in about an average of 1.9 million dollars a year for the program which offsets any uh, expenses so we're primarily self-supported based on that. In turn, unlike a private business, we're not looking to turn the profit, we're looking to reinvest the, the money right back into the program and, and increase more jobs and more work opportunities. This is no question the better part of most prisoners' days in here. And this program here is perfect for helping people that, that don't really have any skills to to help in their spare time to do something with themselves instead of rob and steal and cheat and instead of being a con. It gives people a chance to learn to do something with their hands. I like, kind of like the idea when, you, when it's all done, you see the finished product. It gives you a little bit of pride. You've, you've finished, you've accomplished something, you're something you've done and acquired skills you've, you've learned, you know. It's, uh, and it's something you did with your hands. It's not something that you earned it.
Everybody that comes in here, even the lowest, lowest low life out of all of us, even the lowest one comes in here and he puts his heart and soul into everything and he tries. I've never seen anything, and he tries as hard as they do just to get something. I don't hear if it takes them forever, they still work on it and do it until it's done. I'm really proud of a lot of the stuff I do. Um, and I'm always, uh, sometimes they'll let us get pictures taken with, the, with whatever it is we built. Um, and whenever I get a chance, I like to do that because I, for one, I want to be able, you know, I like, I, like, I like just being able to show off to my friends and family, hey, I built this. You know, two, it could help me when I get out, you know, being able to say, hey, this, these are some of the things I've done. You know, you don't have to just take my word for it. Here's actual products that, that I've been, that I'm capable of making. Is every prisoner that works in here going to become a woodworker? Well, no, they're not. But what they're going to do is they're going to get job skills, they're going to get people skills. Uh, they're going to have to work with somebody they might not like. They, you know, they could be sitting right next to a guy, I don't like him, but i got to work with him because we're both here for the same reason. Uh, people skills, they have to take directives from myself and the other shop supervisors. They're going to be criticized. We're going to say, this isn't right, you've got to redo it. And there's some people who have some anger issues. They have to realize that they can't get angry at us. They have to accept that and work through it. The wood shop, when you go in, it teaches you not only to have a place that you show up every day, you're gonna come away from that with a little coin in your pocket. You have to respect the people around you. Uh, you know, uh, you have to be able to actually just do your time. This is what you're responsible for. Be responsible for that. Don't worry about over here. You're responsible for this. And that, that's one of the things that I, I took from there. Because remember, it's a state prison. you got guys that won't work in the wood shop because they're angry at the man and, you know, they got issues. Uh, we stayed away from them people because they're a waste of time. You know what I mean? This is the finishing shop, the main state prison industries. Um, if you thought of industries as a funnel, this would be the bottom of the funnel. 80 to 90 percent of what we do here gets stained or sealed in some way. Items are stained, then sealed, then sanded, and restained and sealed. I think this is a wave. The dolphin's coming out of the wave like that. It's pretty neat. Now, workers came up with these ideas. A lot of times they look through books, um, they see things on TV, and they talk to their friends and relatives, and they come up with many of the ideas that we have. So, this is the wood shop. This is a small products area of it. Basically our novelties, our small boats are all built here. We have two lathes over in this area. There's one here. Um, there's some more of our dolphins and inmates that are working on those. Their stations right there. The second lathe is here and right now he's working on some buoys. These are going to be buoys that we, we, we have buoy birdhouses but we've never had actual buoys for sale in the showroom and someone, one of the customers recommended that we should do that and we're going to. This is our larger furniture area. Uh, most of our machinery is on this side. Bureaus, bookcases, your hope chests are built on this end. This block right here is going to turn into this. Our common woods are pine and ash, and we purchase those from our facility in Charleston. Which, which supports their program. They have a wood harvesting program in Charleston Correctional Facility. It's pretty unique what they do up there too. There's got to be in the high 90% of what they sell originally comes from here. We have a wood harvesting vocational course. These guys that are here uh, have earned their minimum custody or they come in at minimum. The difference between maximum and minimum is very large. I mean, we don't have a fence around here. It's all a volunteer program. None of them are placed out there just for institutional needs. They have to go through a classification process. They got to be good. We signed them up for a 16-week commitment.
I would say a 25% will actually go into some related business. Sawmills, grapple skitters. There's actually quite a few different jobs that you can get in this industry, not just from using a chainsaw, but knowing you know, the tree identification, the log utilization, those things there employers like. Every single tree that you have out there is different. None of them lean the same way or have the same hazards. There's a lot of things in life that you can relate to just cutting a tree down. And I think that's what we're doing more so than we are. The actual technical skills that we're giving them is the relationship to life itself. I think that helps a lot with these people. That let them know that somebody cares. I mean, like I said, I was here since I was uh, 40 something and I was already grown up so it didn't really I was already I made a mistake and I ended up here a lot of these guys don't think that anything it's all empty it's all uh, just a wall it seems like they're headed nowhere fast and this program is one of the best things that I've seen happen here for the inmates and people are trying more or less to stay out of trouble to get into here. So the job is actually hard to get. You really, like I said, they watch you for a little while. They make sure you're okay. Then you get an opportunity. But they also let you know too, you violate the opportunity. The Lord giveth, he can also taketh away. You know what I mean? So you are well aware of that fact before you even pick up anything in there. Over the years, the guys were very troubled, uh, very bitter, um, very angry, very violent histories, but over a period of time decided they wanted to try something a little different in their life here. But over time, some of them have turned into some of the finest woodworkers we've ever had in this program. And some have gotten out of here and actually are doing that exact job on the streets. I was good enough to run into the right people who owned a nice wood shop. And uh, that was four years ago, and I've never looked back since I've since been out. At least from my perspective, it had nothing to do with any social activism. I mean, I, I, I met Vic, I, I liked him. It was all about feeling comfortable that there was a guy that could do the job and, and, and have the skills, and, uh, and, and that's certainly been more than the case. He's constantly on the go, constantly doing his job, and is a perfectionist that is perfect for what we do. We feel blessed to have had those stars sort of align to get this man in our, in our life and in our business. Things that I learned at the prison helped me tremendously, but this is, it's more. And maybe it's because I'm looking at it as a free person where before I was a prisoner. Before I felt like I had to do it, now I want to do it. I, I worked hard in the wood shop. I was there every chance I could get, and I learned as much as I could. And when I came out, I've been able to put those works into practice so that I can, you know, I, and it's, it's easy now, and I really enjoy it. You know, it's really a wonderful thing. Um, my life has never been better. Um, and it all because I ended up in Maine and, and got in trouble. You know, it's, it's funny how things will work out. <laughs>